fun and inviting. Let's go forward here. There we go. <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit about the problem with our meetings right now. Chris, real quick, I'm sorry. We are recording this uh, just so everybody is aware. Thank you. <clears throat> Great. Thank you, Sean. So let's talk about the problem with our meetings right now. And some of you have probably heard the term Zoom fatigue. And it's a very real thing. Um, it's not something that is made up. So um, during the pandemic, the general population's overall screen time has um, jumped to 13 hours a day on a screen. That could be a computer screen, phone screen, 13 hours a day. Um, and also, like during this time, our brain is processing hundreds of images. Um, so just think about, you know, like during this meeting, I just threw up this screen. You're looking at a, you're looking at a coffee mug. Uh, you might be seeing what, you know, Bob is doing or Sean's doing, Tiffany's doing. You're looking at many different things. Um, and there, then there's also the physical strain of a computer screen on, on your eyes. In the past year, our online consumption of information has doubled. So if you just think about a year ago, the information that you received online, you are now receiving twice as much information as you did a year ago. Now, the next one is, is not a statistic. It's just a fun thing. How many of you go to your Kiwanis Club meeting virtually and you have 20 tabs opened on your computer? Because we're multitasking. That is just something that you're, we're doing. Um, some of you right now, and I can't see everyone, but some of you right now are looking at your phone, you're texting a friend, uh, you're definitely doing a lot of different things rather than just focusing on uh, the meeting. Um, the problem is we also have no commute time. Um, you know, we are essentially um, going meeting to meeting. Um, some of us may not be leaving our homes. And so we don't have um, that time to actually get to our Kiwanis Club where we're just preparing ourselves mentally um, and getting in the mood to, to go to Kiwanis. And like I, I mentioned, we're multitasking a lot. <clears throat> and with all of that, this pandemic has us physically and mentally exhausted. So what can we do? So here are some solutions. <clears throat> and we're gonna talk about um, some, some fun things to do during a meeting, but just overall solutions for a meeting. Um, you know, in the business world, they're telling us, you know, keep meetings brief. Just think about your Kiwanis Club. If your Kiwanis Club meeting was generally an hour in length, have you kept that same hour format in the virtual world? And should you? In a virtual meeting, um, people lose attention very quickly. So it may be something to think about, you know, should your hour long meeting go down to 40 minutes? Does a speaker need to talk, you know, a full 25 minutes or 30 minutes? Um, you know, could you do a, a shorter program? Something personally you can do is just opt for speaker view um, when you're in your Zoom platform so that you only see, like currently, if you're in speaker view, you're only going to see me because I'm the only one talking right now. And so there's not all this distraction going on in your world. Um, social time. Think about, do you have time for your members just to gather? One of the things I love about you, the European Kiwanians is that they start their Zoom platform 30 minutes before their meeting begins. It's not that they're starting a meeting. It's just, <clears throat> excuse me, um, they start the Zoom meeting. People pop on when they want. It's a meet and greet type thing. But the interesting thing is it actually started because they were teaching people how to use Zoom. 
So they would use the first 30 minutes as people would come on, teach them how to use the platform. Then they would start their meeting and then it just became a thing. And so now they just have the social time at the beginning. Um, take 20 seconds every few minutes. You know, if you have opening, you have announcements before your speaker, have people just do, you know, 20 seconds, one minute to go get a coffee refill if you're a breakfast club. There are all types of things that you can do. Just have them take a break from their screen. Could just be a stand up and stretch type thing. Um, recognition, are you still having fun? Are you um, recognizing people for the great things that they do? Maybe you could have a member of the week and you can see that um, you know, some people have these wonderful um, Pennsylvania district Zoom backgrounds. Create a Zoom background for a member of the week um, or a member of the month and have them use that Zoom background for that meeting. Um, call attention to them. Um, you know, you could make all kinds of fun Zoom backgrounds for people you want to um, recognize. Um, the other thing that I might suggest is to, and of course, you know, obviously with a workshop like this, we didn't do this, but share any PowerPoints or agendas beforehand so people are not necessarily reading anything on the screen, but it's been emailed to them before. Nothing is a surprise. Um, the graphics on the screen are just um, you know, emphasizing what, it, what is happening. Um, you can even use breakouts in the Zoom platform so that you can have committee meetings or you could just have small discussions. If you have a really great speaker and you wanna break them off into discussion groups, you could do that. Do something um, interactive and, and that really engages um, conversation. And then lastly, think about yourself as a guest. If you popped on to your virtual Kiwanis meeting, what would you think about it? Um, and so just you know, think about those type of, of things. So now let's share some fun things. The next two slides I'm going to share, nothing new. These are things that I actually used in my original Making Your Meetings More Fun and Engaging workshop when we were meeting in person but I think that they are very relevant to what we're doing um, you know, in the virtual, virtual world. Um, first of all, um, if your club meets weekly, maybe don't have a speaker every week. Think of other things to do, and we're gonna talk about that um, in a moment. Um, and then, you know, even if you are meeting um, once a week, what can you do once a month? Um, you know, there are months that have um, five Tuesdays or five Wednesdays in them. Um, you know, can you do something special for that meeting? Um, could you uh, take one of your meetings and instead of meeting, ask your club to enter club with another club? Are you inviting clubs in to enter club with you? Um, and then maybe just cancel a meeting and ask a ask each member to do an hour of service instead of meeting and then talk about it the next week. What did they do? Um, In-house service projects, and we'll talk about that in uh, just a moment, but we're all about service. And if you're still meeting virtually and you have a lot of uh, members who are uh, maybe shut in or just can't get out as much, you know, this is, this is an opportunity to reignite a member's um, passion for service, why they join Kiwanis, um, you know, reinforce your club's mission. And then one of the projects that I always talked about was, uh, you know, during a club meeting, giving everyone $5 and the next week uh, and telling them to go out and make the most of it. And the next week uh, telling people or asking people to report on what they did with that $5. Um, that could be done in the virtual world. You could mail them a $5 bill. Um, you know, and have some fun with it. We're, now we're going to talk about um, things that you can do during your virtual meeting. So what have you learned from your members? I chose this background today because uh, it's a good example. If, if I'm a member of your club and I've been sitting here every week 
and someone has never noticed, I mean, obviously you've noticed this lovely owl painting, but someone's never commented on it. And all of a sudden, Tiffany says, Chris, tell us about that painting. And I say, well, I painted it myself. Not true. I really did paint it myself. It's from Pier One. Um, so, but what have you learned that I'm an artist? That opens up a whole interesting world about me as a Kwanian. And it also opens up a, um, you know, could be a, a virtual home tour. Maybe I have art that I've done all over my house. I was talking to one Kiwanis club when we were making outreach calls and this happened. They just started talking about the things in the backgrounds. And then they started um, each week having two members showcase a hobby. Um, one member actually took his computer out into his wood shop and showed people how to make crafts in his wood shop. Very interesting things that come from a member's own home. Um, what interesting talents do you have or do your members have? Um, you know, somewhere up here on a shelf, I have a harmonica. I can't play it. It's my grandpa's. But what if I did play the harmonica? Hey, that's instant entertainment for your virtual club meeting. Um, there, you can have a human scavenger hunt. Um, so if all of a sudden you're having a virtual meeting and you say, you know, bring me your favorite photo that is hanging in your house or if you're in your office, grab one from your office. And then you start sharing stories about that favorite photo. Um, find a knickknack that you purchased on a trip. Share some stories. Um, grab something that you recently um, got as a gift. And again, could spark some great stories. Just some human interest things from your, um, your club members. Now, had I um, started presenting um, on the other side of the room, uh, you would have learned that my Christmas tree is still up. Uh, you know, sad, but true. Um, but, you know, those are just fun things that you learn about your Kiwanians. So these are two things that I have actually done for meetings, and they're really fun. Um, I purchased uh, two items from Amazon. The first being a set of bingo cards. $13. Best $13 I've spent in a while. So I got 50 bingo cards and like a 500, uh, um, 5,000 of these chips. And um, I put a bingo card and several chips in an envelope and sent it all out to the people we were meeting with. Um, the bingo uh, calling cards were just a deck of cards. You just shuffle them and you just call out numbers. Fun, interactive, easy. And that's something that you can reuse many times. The other thing I did is I sent, I dealt everyone out five random cards, sent them to people. We did virtual poker. Who has the best hand of poker? Again, just something fun. Now, we did do both of those things with a do not open envelope. It said do not open until, and we put the date on it. Um, so that's kind of fun because you have this unveiling during your Kiwanis Club meeting. You're like, what is it? What is it in this envelope? Um, you know, we clubs have 50 50s, uh, raffles. Um, you can still send tickets out. You could just send, you know, tickets out to people and have, um, um, you know, prizes each week that you give out. You could still do your 50-50. You can do um, online payments, electronic payments. Um, so, you know, there are multiple ways to, um, to have some, some fun. Uh, if you are a club that um, eats together, still do that, um, but do it in a different way. Um, you know, share your favorite recipes. You know, is it a family recipe? Um, is it one of my favorite recipes because I'm a diabetic and, you know, this is a great recipe for, for diabetics. 
Um, is it something because I never have much food in my house, so I just go to my pantry and I, I throw together three things and it makes an amazing dish. Um, so you can talk about your favorite recipes. And then after the meeting, everyone emails their recipes um, to each other. So socializing, we've talked about, you've probably had virtual happy hours. Um, online meetings don't have to be um, all business. Um, you know, you can, um, you know, depending on your club, maybe it is a true happy hour. Maybe you make your, um, you know, favorite uh, drink and, and bring it and, and, and discuss it. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, think about um, that type of thing. As clubs start meeting in person, and some, and some clubs have, and we're going to talk about a hybrid situation at the end of, of this presentation, but think about having porch gatherings. Um, you know, is there someone who has a large outdoor space that also has good internet and a good laptop that they can bring out and, um, you know, half the members could stop by stand on the porch and, um, you know, the other, you know, half could be virtual, whatever. I got this idea when um, um, right after um, I tested positive for COVID uh, December 22nd. So I was quarantined the entire Christmas break. And so, you know, after my um, uh, 14 days, um, a friend and I um, needed to see people. And so literally we drove around and, you know, we called people from their, their driveway and we would stand outside. They would open their screen doors or a screen window. And we would just have this conversation. I'm like, why aren't Kiwanians doing this? Like we could do meetings this way. You could host a meeting at a, um, you know, someone who's sort of shut in. Um, you know, there are all kinds of things that you just have to be creative to, to think about these things. Have fun with your meetings, have spirit days, uh, crazy hats, um, you know, blue shirt days. Um, you could have a, you know, semi-formal meeting. Everyone shows up nicely dressed. Um, you know, just think about those type of things. Uh, take time to plan. You know, besides doing things, you know, in the moment, take time to plan for post-pandemic. Um, what are the kids in your community going to need after we emerge from this um, pandemic? And start planning now for events that you might have, who knows, in July, August, September. Um, think that far in advance. So I said, you know, don't forget about um, service. And I also talked about the sort of the human scavenger hunt. Um, and the porch um, meetups. So let's merge all these together. Have an impromptu uh, canned food drive. So, uh, you know, during a meeting say, hey, we're gonna take five minutes and I want you to go clean out your pantries of things that you've purchased that you're not going to use and you know, non-perishables and, you know, make this big deal about it. And then in the next week, you're gonna drop it off on the porch of Sean Smith. And, um, you know, now you've got this impromptu um, food drive happening. So, you know, think about that. Send people um, supplies that you could do a um, project with. And maybe it's just, you know, cardstock that you can do greeting cards or their pre made um, bookmarks that, you know, everyone probably has scissors and, and maybe some some markers or, or things to do. Uh, thank you cards. You could do thank you cards to um, anyone. Uh, think about your SLPs that are still doing um, service and, and maybe you're going to do, um, you know, thank you cards to your key club members and someone then will spearhead getting those uh, to the, the key club members. There are so many easy service projects. You can Google um, things like service from your couch um, or easy service projects. Um, we have some things on the Kiwanis website as well. Um, some other things, um, invite people to your meetings, um, invite your SLP members, faculty advisors, um, the school superintendents, 
um, you know, recognize them. Uh, this blurb is actually from last spring, but you might want to think in advance of honoring those graduating members of, of Key Club or Circle K. Um, there are several party platforms, basically. Um, you can have game nights, you can host a watch party. There are so many things that you can do. You know, so just start um, Googling things like that. Ask, um, if you don't know about these things, ask younger people, ask your kids, grandkids, um, you know, what are some fun interactive things that, that we can do? Um, talked about inviting guests. Um, this is a great opportunity to look at your former member list and invite people back and, um, you know, just check out Kiwanis again. Um, you know, people are, are working from home. They may have, you know, the time, maybe the commute was an issue for them before. So now you can um, invite them back. And overall, just be creative. Definitely try something new. Think about your interests of your members and really what um, they may want to do. Now, I would like to um, talk a little bit about helping um, other members or especially other clubs that have not met online. Um, there's probably a club or two in your um, vicinity that maybe hasn't started meeting um, just because they're not tech savvy. Um, we have a club in our division that has not met in over a year. Um, but some things that you might want to um, do is invite them to inner club with you, but then ask them to stay after for 30 minutes so that you could kind of give them a little tutorial, what they saw, how Zoom works, and you might want to then become a um, online club coach for them. So you could get them started online and then you could be with them for several club meetings and just kind of make sure that everything is, is going well um, for them. So really helping clubs get online is, is key. Um, the other thing is for the clubs that are having virtual meetings, virtual um, service projects, um, even virtual fundraisers. One thing that um, I've learned in the last couple of weeks is the biggest issue is that people are having great events but they're not having a wonderful attendance. Um, and not in all cases, but in a lot of cases. So you really have to increase your social media presence. And um, by that, I mean that you need to take your club's Facebook page and share it with all of your friends. You know, you're in Pennsylvania. If they're in California, share it with them. They know you're a Kiwani and they know the great things that, that you're doing. And then always create events for things, whether it's meetings, service projects, fundraisers, um, because what's stopping a friend of yours in California from donating to a, a fundraiser? So if they see that on your Facebook page because you've shared that event or because they've liked uh, your club's page and they're seeing some notifications, um, you know, they may want to participate. They may believe in, in, that, um, in that charity. Um, so, you know, think about those things that, that you can do. Last couple slides here. Um, let's think about what Kiwanis is going to look like post-COVID. Um, <clears throat> you know, we were just talking about uh, in the office uh, the other day that on March 13th of last year, we had a staff meeting and they said, we're gonna send you home for two or three weeks until we flatten the curve. That's exactly what they said. We have been working from home since. Um, so March 16th is our one year anniversary of working from home. Um, I talked to a, a friend of mine who in Arizona um, last night, they have still not gone back to school. He is a teacher, he has taught for an entire year online. So we have to think about what we're going to do post pandemic. Um, 
not only club meetings, but also service projects and fundraisers. Um, so you have your face-to-face -face meetings, you have your virtual meetings, everything in the new world is going to be hybrid. We're talking about this in the Kiwanis world. Um, as of today, we do not know what the Salt Lake City Convention is going to look like, but we know that if we meet in person, there will also be a virtual component. We know that every event from this point forward will have a virtual component. So you must think about that. So with that, that is my presentation. Um, I think we have some time for questions. I don't know, I've not been looking at the chat room. So um, I hope that um, some of my friends who have been watching that um, can help me out if there are any questions or if you just want to share, um, that is great. So if anybody has any questions, you can raise your hand and we will uh, unmute you. Uh, Eugene has a question and go ahead, Eugene, unmute yourself. So um, with, all the, with all the reason uh, social events that I've been heard, hearing about collapse, like we want to think about some social ideas uh, that we can tell during our regular club meetings. What are some best social socials you have heard, heard of, like games or et cetera, are best for the for the for the meetings? Um, yeah, you know, so when we're talking about a virtual world, you know, everyone thinks that you know everything is virtual. So you know, you've got your watch parties. Um, there are several platforms that um, there are. Um, uh, like online games that you can play um, uh, teams and off the top of my head I'm, I'm losing all the names of, of those platforms but you can definitely google them but the reason I went back to old school is uh, and that's with the bingo cards um, is just the the tangible um, you know having that game in in hand um, and you know just enjoying that um, you know, one of the things that uh, I'm taking a, a certification class right now, and, and we did this whole thing about um, life in the virtual world. We have lost every sense except the sense of sight when it comes to virtual meetings. Um, and when you think about it, it is so true. The other thing that um, the reason I'm in this, this um, course is um, it's a, it's really about um, equity and inclusion, um, but the judgments that are made about people um, just from meeting um, in your background. Um, so as an example, um, um, Kathy Szymanski knows this because um, she um, has seen me on many um, Zoom calls and I'm usually in my kitchen. Um, which if I just turned around, you would see my kitchen because I only live in 600 square feet. Um, but um, for a while, you could see my alcohol. Now, I'm not an alcoholic. I had four bottles and um, someone, I'm sorry, six bottles. And someone said something about um, the alcohol. And I said, well, that's interesting because four of them were gifts from Kiwanians including one being from your immediate past governor. Um, but, um, you know, it was a Kwanian calling me out for having alcohol in the background. So you really have to think about those type of things and not making judgments about people. Um, but, you know, having that social time, and the reason I bring up the alcohol is because, um, you know, we have those happy hour times. Enjoy fellowship with your Kwanians. Um, you know, like if, if you're not doing service, share stories, um, you know, just, just have a, you know, a toast, whatever, um, breakfast meeting, you know, go out and find some donuts, make your favorite breakfast, just have fun. Uh, we have another question from Bill Walters. Hi, Bill. Hello there, Chris. If we send you an email, will you send us the PowerPoint program that you just showed us? Yes, so I actually, um, Sarah asked me to upload the PowerPoint. I think um, it will be shareable, but yes, I definitely would, would send it to you as well. Thank you. 
Anybody else have a question? Uh, we have a question from Dave Schickel. Dave. Hi, Dave. Go ahead. Okay, now I'm unmuted. Um, I'd like to know if it would be possible for Pennsylvania Kiwanis to set up on its website, maybe a section where clubs could share their virtual meeting ideas. Um, I think it would be great if we could get, uh, your suggestions, Chris, were great. I think we could probably get additional ones and just get ideas posted where different clubs could access them. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Uh, good resource library for you. Um, the other, um, and I, I'm sorry, I didn't check out the Pennsylvania um, website before I um, you know, did this presentation. One great thing that I will say that Nebraska Iowa district has done is um, when you go to their um, homepage, you can click on um, virtual meeting directory and it lists all the clubs and um, either their, their links or um, a contact person so that you can join their clubs and so that you can enter club with them. Um, and I think that that's just awesome. Anybody else? Uh, Joy, Ashley, and this is going to be our last uh, question. Joy, go ahead. Hi, Joy. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, um, I just wanted to share. I thank you for your presentation. Um, it has given me uh, quite a bit of um, ideas to add to what I have done. But um, just quickly, I'd like to just share what I did last week for my meet and greet and um, meeting our new members. Um, after we did the introduction, we had a guest speaker for two minutes, and then we had a Kiwanis trivia, and um, it was a Kiwanis trivia tag. So, you know, you don't expect the new members to know the answers. So if they didn't know it, they would tag someone else. Um, and if that person didn't know it, they would tag someone else just to keep you engaged. And then when the answer was done, that person at the beginning would get, we had a Mardi Gras Theme because it was Mardi Gras and they would get a bead and so everybody would get a bead and then in the end we invited them to donate uh, ten dollars for their actual bead uh, for the Children Foundation so we got donations towards that and then so I'm in the process now of sending them a thank you for the donations and to send them their beads and then that bead if they wear it to the next two Nittany Kiwanis function, they come in for free. So it kind of adds some value to it. And Sorry, Joey, we have to cut you off here. We have a minute left. Um, uh, Chris, go ahead. You want to respond to that? Um, yeah, so Joy, one of the things that you said was uh, engagement. Um, and I think that that is so key. Um, I I'm in um, a, a group that you must have your camera on. And I think that that is um, really important. Um, now, maybe you're not gonna mandate that your, your camera is on, um, but definitely, you know, making sure that you're, you're seeing people and, and interacting with people, that is, that is so, so key. So um, thank you for, for sharing um, that. I love the fact that um, you're tagging people, you're keeping them engaged, um, you can, just think about fun games um, that you may have. You, you said Trivial Pursuit. I'm, I'm looking over at my, um, my stack of games. You can easily play, you know, 80s trivia. Um, you can play all kinds of different games if you just think about how you can do it online. Chris, thank you so much for joining us. Thank today. you for having um, me. And uh, if you are staying for, uh, if you are joining uh, Jennifer uh, Cromwell for her, um, uh, yeah, uh, sorry, for her uh, uh, parliamentary procedure meeting, uh, just stay right here. The other links are in your chat room and uh, just click on those and it will take you to your next uh, 
uh, presentation. So thank you, Chris, for joining us and everybody have a great morning.